Hi everyone, I am Shanali and I am here representing Blue and Grey in behalf of Mr. K.P. Dominic, whom obviously you all know. He's not only a motivation speaker, but also a role model for a lot of people. Welcome you all once again to this very first uh, webinar, which is search protection, search protective device. And we would be talking about why it is essential, as you all can see in the um, screen, that this webinar is presented by Cape Electric. Without mentioning, we all know that uh, Cape Electric has been a face in the nation. But I would still want to show you some of the most important features and uh, the accomplishment which Cape has been. So when there was no SPD in India, Cape is the one who had install the first SPD for protecting industrial electro electronic system DC combiner solution. Also in 2004, technical seminars on lightning protection not only help industries in solving failure related to lightning, but also it gave a depth knowledge about international standards. Now in the 2016, TNS system with PME for industrial earthing with our earth electrodes in soil carrying safety and earning a level above the existing practices. Also in 2019, global earning system interconnecting EHV, HV, LV, and ELV system for large industrial and commercial installation and smart cities. Starting of the first project in India, solutions with almost negligible touch, voltage, and with our earth pits and soil. In 2002, solve a digital platform as knowledge and process partner to ensure safe operation of low voltage electricity. Leading the market with right solution, yes, this is CAPE. Is CAPE's motto and the team in CAPE Electric are continuously trained to provide end-to-end -end solution from design to implementation, rather than selling products for the customer's need. So about Mr. Gopa Kumar, He's an electrical engineer, managing director of Cape Electric. He's having more than 28 years experience in electrical safety, lighting protection, EMI, EMC, etc. Also, he is a member of BIS, ETD20, ETD30, ETD50, and NVC2016 Electrical Committee, working room, group of IEC, TC64 safe, Safety, TC81 Lighting Protection, SC37A SPDs, published article in various magazine and published the book, The Missing Link in the Subject of Electrical Safety. Moving forward, we have our subject expert, who is Mr. Vijay Singh, who is a product manager in Cape Electric. Nevertheless, he has a 10 years experience in the field of lighting protection and search protection system. He has completed his engineering and electrical and electronics engineering in 2013. Upon that, he's, he's been working hard to uh, save the entire nation, have been involved in more than site study of around 100 cities, having 100 sites having problems related to search and lighting protection, have done site studies in various data centers, hospital, telecom sectors, etc. Worked and supported major oil and gas industries like HPCL, IOCL in the designing lighting and search protection worked with major government sectors like airport authorities, Indian railways, NTPC, BHEL, etc. Have given multiple presentations about search protection devices. Currently working in Cape Electric Private Limited as product manager for search protection devices. We very warm welcome you, Mr. Vijay Singh, and thank you so much for attending this webinar and giving your valuable time to us. Thank you. Thank you, Shunali. So today we are That's going to sure. talk about uh, SPD, a typical, a particular parameter of the SPD, which has to be taken care while selecting and installing an SPD. Uh, any surge arrestor, be it low voltage or high voltage or whatever, these devices are connected in parallel and uh, we use from the face uh, to the SPD, wires are used to connect. Also, from the SPD to the earth or neutral, again, we use wire to interconnect these devices into the electrical network. So, the length of this wire is always a critical parameter which decides the final protection level. 
if the length is more the effectiveness of the spd is gone gone in the sense spd will be like a dummy piece it's it's just be on, be there it won't work or in the other sense it won't protect uh, uh, your electronics or it, it won't do its intended purpose so the maximum length of the wire which is given in the standards are or recommended in the standard is about 500 millimeters so vijay will be explaining about the importance of line length and uh, uh, the recommendations in the standard uh, uh, so probably after the presentation we can have a question and answer session and if you have any questions we can uh, clarify to you over to you vijay you can share your screen and start the presentation good morning everybody uh, welcome to the webinar uh, today we are going to have a webinar on surge protection device it is one of the first webinar of the series we are going to conduct a series on surge protection device and as uh, gopa sir told Today we are going to focus on uh, wire length in an SPD. How much a wire length in an SPD should be uh, and what are the effects of the wire length in an SPD. So as you know, Cape Electric is, uh, we started in 1996 and has a specialization in SPDs since 1997. Okay. So now first we are going to uh, discuss about various international standards available for SPDs. So these are the various uh, standards for SPDs like IEC 61643 part 11 2011 which explains about various uh, requirements and test methods of an SPD. 61643 part 12 which tells about selection and application principle of an SPD. How to select an SPD for what application. 61643 part 21 uh, discuss about the same uh, requirements and test methods of an SPD for signal and telecom uh, SPDs. Where is 61643 part 22 discuss about uh, selection application of SPDs, uh, signal and telecom SPDs, that means uh, data SPDs. Uh, 61643 part 31 discuss, uh, 31 and 32 discuss the same thing about the solar PV SPDs. Now first two standards 61643 part 11 and 61643 part uh, 12 is as it is ex uh, accepted by our uh, IS also uh, with the name IS 16463 part 11 and part 12. The upper two standards has been accepted by India also. <clears throat> Apart from that, as you know, SPD is also an uh, integral part of lightning protection system. It is also called as internal lightning protection system. So I, IS 62305 or IEC 62305 also discuss about the same thing. SPDs. Again, uh, <clears throat> uh, with respect to electrical installation, IEC 60364 part 5, uh, uh, part 553 uh, discuss about how to install an SPD in an electrical system. That means it says how to use SPD in an electrical wiring safely. Now, uh, as sir told and as uh, Shunali also told that uh, SPD is one of the most neglected subjects in India. A lot of people even don't know what is the difference between SPD and an MCB. So today we are going to understand what is an SPD, why do we need an SPD, what are the parameters we are going to uh, look while selecting an SPD. This will be conducted in multiple webinars. This whole will be covered in multiple webinars. So what is an SPD? SPD as uh, name suggests stands for surge protection devices. It is, uh, it protects our electrical and electronics equipment from heavy voltage transients known as surges or impulse. Now, uh, generally lightning is going to strike and we don't know how it will be. So for the sake of testing and measurement, standard has uh, said, uh, has defined two type of current impulses. First one is 10 by 30 microsecond current impulse. Second one is 8 by 20 uh, microsecond current impulse. 10 by 30, uh, 30 microsecond uh, is basically equivalent impulse current of a positive lightning current. That means if we have to define a lightning impulse, it will be defined in terms of 10 by 30 microsecond, the positive lightning current. Second one is 8 by 20 microsecond which is equivalent Vijay, of a transient over. Vijay, you have to make it a little bit slow. You are uh, too fast. So it will be okay. easy if you make it a yeah. little bit slow. Okay. 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 So 8 by 20 uh, microsecond is an equivalent current of a transient over voltage. That means the surges which are going to generate uh, due to some transient switching or some other uh, coupling of lightning, those surges can be defined as 8 by 20 microsecond. I am going to explain the same through a uh, graph also. Like see, this is a normal waveform of a 10 by 30 microsecond uh, impulse. You can see uh, this particular impulse goes from 0 to 100 percent of its peak value in 10 microseconds and from 100 uh, percent of its peak value 
to 50% of its crust value in 350 microseconds. Hence, it is called as 10 by 350 microsecond waveform. Similarly, we have 8 by 20 microsecond waveform also. And you can see that in first 8 microseconds, it reaches its peak and next 20 microsecond, it comes down to half of its crust value. From the waveform, it is very clear that lightning impulse has a very high specific energy and charge. So it can create more damage to your electrical system when compared to a 8 by 20 microsecond. <clears throat> now, uh, important point is how do we connect an SPD in an electrical system? Suppose we have an electrical system, uh, three phase R by V, neutral and potential earth. Now there are two methods of connecting in SPD, a three plus one connection and a four plus zero connection. For the sake of explaining, we have taken a three plus one connection. In this connection, you can see that three SPDs are connected in between line and neutral and fourth SPD is connected in between neutral and earth. Similarly, another possible configuration is all three lines and neutral can directly be connected to earth. Right now, we are going to discuss with this particular uh, configuration. Now, in a normal state, SPD is a parallel device with open circuited. Normally, it is in uh, no condition. It is not going to interfere in your uh, system. Suppose there was a lightning strike or some other case, there was a surge through earth. So <clears throat> once there uh, was a surge through earth, our earth will be at a very high potential. Let's say it was on 50 kilovolt earth. Now, since our earth is at 50 kilovolt, there's a potential difference between neutral and earth. If there was no SPD <clears throat> because of this potential difference, your equipment is going to fail. Now we have installed an SPD. This particular potential difference is more than the voltage protection level of an SPD. That means the threshold voltage of an SPD. So because of this pot higher potential difference, SPD4 is going to operate. Once SPD4 operates, it creates a short circuit. Now because of the short circuit, uh, <coughs> this voltage which was at uh, earth at uh, earlier at earth will now be reflected at neutral also. So now new uh, neutral and PE are at the same potential, EQ potential. But still there is a potential difference between neutral and B, neutral and Y and neutral and R. Because of this potential difference, SPD 1, 2 and 3 operate simultaneously. Then because of this operation, the voltage which was as neutral is again <coughs> reaching to R, Y and B. Now you see our complete system is at EQ potential. R, Y, B, neutral is at uh, same potential. So there won't be any potential difference across the load and our load is not going to fail. Now whole thing which has happened here has to happen a very at a very short duration. Let's say a few nanoseconds because in earlier slide we have seen that a normal switching surge will be in your system for 28 microseconds. So we need a device which reacts faster than uh, faster than 28 microseconds. So hence we use an SPD which has a response time of a uh, few nanoseconds. One nanosecond is the best uh, response time we have and it can be 25 nanoseconds as well. So this is how a normal SPD operates. So basic functions of an SPD. So SPD has basically three uh, major functions. In the absence of surges, SPD shall not have any significant influence on the operational characteristics of the system to which it is applied. That means once we apply SPD to a system, we install SPD inside a system. In case there is no surge when the voltage is normal and stable, SPD should not create any interference. It should be a completely passive element. <clears throat> it should not interfere in the normal working of a system. In this, uh, normally in MOV based SPDs, there's a problem of leakage voltage. Uh, this can create a problem. TOV will also influence the SPD. This we are going to uh, discuss in the next webinars. Uh, second basic function of SPD is during the occurrence of surges, the SPD shall respond to the surges by lowering its impedance and thus diverting the surge current to it, uh, surge current through it to limit the voltage to its protective level. The surges could initiate a power flow uh, current through the SPD. That means once there is a surge, SPD should immediately respond to the, uh, respond to the surge by uh, doing two particular things. One, it has, first, first, it has to create a Q potential. It has to limit the voltage to its voltage production level. Second, it has to divert the surge current to earth or source wherever it is applicable. So it will do basically two purposes. One, creating the Q potential. Second, it has to divert the surge current. Now, in case of spark based SPDs, uh, there can be an issue of follow current and that can create a very dangerous situation that again we are going to discuss later. 
third thing is after the occurrence of surges spd uh, the spd recovers to a high impedance state uh, <clears throat> and ex and extinguish any possible uh, follow current that means once the surges has gone normally as i told spd is in no condition a very high impedance condition during the event of surges it will create a short circuit and once the surge voltage is gone the surge is gone spd should again come back to its normal state and uh, should not create any follow current again uh, in uh, in case of spark gaps follow current can create a dangerous situation so additional uh, requirements also has been specified by the standard 61643 ic 61643 part 12 has specified some uh, additional requirement first one is protection of spds against uh, the direct contact uh, that is very obvious that means one is once an spd is installed we should not be able to directly touch the uh, current carrying parts of the spd that protection we have to provide second one is safety in the event of spd failure which means once we have connected an connected an spd in a system uh, during the event where spd comes to end of its life that means when spd is about to fail there are two possibilities first possibility is spd can fail in an open circuit condition in that condition there is no problem spd is going to just disconnect itself from the system second possibility is spd fails in a short circuit mode once an spd fails in a short circuit mode uh, there is a, a short circuit current which flows from the power source through the spd into the earth now <clears throat> energy dissipation during the conduction of this short circuit current can be excessive and can cause a fire hazard hence spd manufacturer should ensure that their spd uh, should uh, ensure the safety in the event of spd failure this is what is explained in the standard 61643 part 12 as well now lightning impulse can come in various ways now these are the few examples uh, how a lightning impulse can come for example first one can be a long uh, impulse and then followed by a subsequent short uh, impulses then the second one can be a long impulse uh, very high impulse followed by a long duration impulse then a subsequent impulse then uh, another possibility is a long duration impulse <coughs> with a superimposing uh, short duration subsequent impulses now these are the various examples it can be anything uh, it can be like uh, multiple long duration impulses also so here we have designed uh, defined the some parameters of how uh, this impulses will react and how this how parameters they will have uh, first we will talk about the first positive impulse that that means uh, the impulse which is generated due to positive lightning strike now this is very rare generally accounts for 5% of the total lightning impulses lightning uh, strikes uh, in the first positive impulse peak current will have around 200 kilo amperes in level 1 now we all know that there are four uh, lightning protection levels level 1 level 2 level 3 and level 4 in level 1 first first positive impulse will have 200 kilo amperes current second uh, in level 2 it will have 150 amperes of current kilo amperes of current level 3 and 4 it will have 100 kilo amperes of current now uh, one of the major important parameters is this average time uh, average steepness that means di by dt uh, when we, we are talking in terms of a wire length we know that impedance of wire length uh, or the voltage drop across the wire length completely depends on the rate of change of current see in case of first positive impulse di by dt is 20 kilo ampere per microsecond <clears throat> similarly in case of first negative impulse di by dt is around 100 kilo amperes uh, per microsecond in subsequent impulse impulses you see the value of k the i impulse may be lesser but uh, di by dt is very high that is up to around 200 kilo amperes uh, per uh, microsecond so these are the parameters of a uh, various type of impulses like uh, positive impulse negative impulse subsequent impulse and long stroke now let us calculate how much a voltage drop will be in a uh, in a 1 meter wire length so generally we know that uh, a wire length of 1 meter will have a inductance of 1 micro henry now a general calculation for potential uh, difference will be for first positive impulse we knew that di by dt was 20 kilo amperes per microsecond v is equal to l di by dt we all know that so l is 1 micro henry uh, which we have uh, we have written earlier di by dt is 20 k per microsecond 
so there will be a potential drop of 20 kv per meter in case of first positive impulse with a wire length of only 1 meter similarly if we calculate for first negative discharge of first negative impulse and subsequent impulse uh, impulse v is equal to l di by dt l is 1 micro henry uh, di by dt in case of negative impulse was 100 ka per microsecond uh, di by dt in case of subsequent impulse was 200 uh, k uh, per microsecond so voltage drop comes around 100 k uh, kv per meter and 200 kv per meter that means whatever good quality spd we are using with one uh, one meter of wire the voltage protection level or the <coughs> voltage drop will be around 1 uh, kv uh, 100 kv per meter so now what standard says about this so standard first talk about <coughs> the residual voltage to equipment that means the effective voltage protection level in an equipment will be the voltage drop across i will explain in this way the voltage drop across wire plus the voltage protection level of an spd plus the voltage drop across the wire this i am going to explain in the next slide so as per is 732 and nbc 2016 the maximum acceptable wire length across a spd is 0.5 meter that means if you see a connection this is your uh, main breaker and this is spd uh, connected in between earth and this uh, line let's say it's a line so from line to spd there will be one wire from spd to earth bus bar there will be a second wire let's imagine uh, length of first wire from uh, main incumber to spd is a uh, meters from spd to earth bus bar is b meters so standard says that a plus b shall not be more than half meter i am repeating again standard says that a plus b shall not be more than half meter that means tot and connecting wire of an spd including the connection between line and spd and spd and earth should not be more than 0.5 meter so there are basically two type of uh, spd connection first one on the left side second one is a bus bar mounted connection which is on the right side same is explained very well in is 732 as well as nbc 2016 so uh, what we have concluded is long connecting wires will have lesser protection now selection of spds uh, on the basis of uh, voltage protection level uh, and how voltage protection level is dependent on the uh, wire length now there are three parameters uw up and upf uw is voltage impulse withstand of a uh, equipment let's say i am talking about an ups so every equipment has a certain voltage with impulse with uh, withstand capacity it can be 1.5 kv 2 kv 3 kv or it can be anything but it, it they will mention this uw in their uh, data sheets and uh, parameters second thing is up up is the voltage protection level of an spd that means it is a uh, level at which spd starts operating now up can also be said that uh, considered as a as a voltage drop across the spd now third parameter is upf the effective voltage protection level that means after after considering all the voltage drop across wire spd and the another connecting wire the resultant uh, voltage protection level is called as effective voltage protection level now to ensure the equipment safety the condition which we need to fulfill is uw shall be higher than upf that means impulse withstand <coughs> voltage of an equipment shall be more than the effective voltage protection level of that spd then only that spd is going to protect our equipment <clears throat> so let's see this is an spd connected in between point a and b and d is an uh, <clears throat> backup protection or disconnector fuse you see l1 is the wire length one then there is a voltage protection level of S, uh, uh, up is the voltage protection level of spd then l2 now effective voltage protection level <clears throat> yeah, or upf will be voltage drop across l1 plus up plus voltage drop across l2 so if we go as per standard is 732 and ic 61643 we have considered a wire length of 500 mm and let us calculate the effective voltage protection level so voltage drop across uh, <clears throat> 500 wire length mm wire length in case of first positive impulse will be 10 kv as we have earlier uh, seen that 20 kv was uh, for 1 meter of wire length 
so for half meter of wire length uh, voltage drop will be 10 kV first negative impulse will have a voltage drop of uh, 50 kV we have seen that for 1 meter it was 100 kV so for half meter it is 50 kV for subsequent impulses uh, for 1 meter it was 200 kV so for half meter of wire length which is the standard uh, recommendation by the standard it is 100 kV now we are going to see the calculated upf calculated upf will be ul1 which is 10 kv <coughs> sorry ul1 plus ul2 is 10 kv and then up is 1.5 kv for general spd this can vary spd to spd but generally it is 1.5 kv only we have considered 1.5 for that reason only so for first positive impulse the calculated upf the actual voltage protection level of the spd is 11.5 kv for first negative impulse or discharge it is around 51.5 kv and for subsequent impulses it is around 100 and 1.5 kv so are are is our system actually protected by this and now what is the solution we are going to talk about that particular thing in this uh, webinar and again uh, this uh, these values are calculate, calculated from level 1 I, uh, lpl level 1 we have al also made a calculation as per level uh, lpl level 4 which also i am going to share uh, show so let us consider a wire length of 500 mm and we have con uh, considered 50% current in lpl4 so one second just a moment so you, we have seen that in lpl4 a first positive impulse was having Uh, di by dt of uh, 20 kv and current of uh, 100 uh, amperes so we have calculated first positive impulse will have a voltage drop of 2.5 kv first negative impulse will have a impulse of uh, a voltage drop of 12.5 kv a subsequent impulse will have a impulse of 25 kv so effective voltage protection level uh, effective uh, upf will be for first positive impulse it will be uh, 4 kv first negative discharge it will be 14 kv first subsequent impulse it will be 25 uh, 26.5 kv which again is in, again is very high which again is very high so now we know that with increase of wire length we are going to have a very uh, high uh, upf and we have to reduce that as less as possible as low as possible the best case scenario is if we have a wire length of 0 uh, meter if we have a wire length of 0 0 meter the calculated upf for first positive will be 1.5 kv first negative will be 1.5 kv first uh, subsequent impulse will also be 1.5 kv because uh, because of this zero wire length there won't be any voltage drop and since the wire length is zero di by dt becomes irrespective it is not that important and it, it is again uh, irrespective of lightning protection level Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to request you to post your questions and every all the questions and queries. Please post it in Q and A box because in the chat box, if you post your question, it might be missed by our panelists. So I request you once again to post all the questions in Q and A box only. Thank you. Okay, now uh, these are the various examples of an SPD. Uh, which uh, how an spd now generally is connected in our system if you see uh, sometimes they uh, people they don't have a space in uh, the existing db so what they do is they put spd in a certain uh, D, uh, next db and in that case wire length can be as high as 5 meters and even uh, in my practical experience i've seen wire length even up to 12 10 12 meters and you can just imagine for 1 meter voltage drop was that much for 12 meters uh, cable how much will be the voltage drop now we have discussed the problem what is the solution one of the solutions is we use a bus bar mounted spd or a v type spd which can directly be mounted on the bus bar so this is how a normal bus bar mounted spd looks these are the various advantages it has a high, uh, very large thermal capacity electrodes uh, to absorb the heat dissipation during the surges strong aluminum housing so to prevent any explosion in case there is a uh, surge or spd is heated up or any other reason if there is a uh, explosion the strong aluminum housing is going to protect 
we have a system with a 1500 plus pounds of pressure which results in, in very low dynamic resistance and higher conductivity again there is no fuel because it's aluminium body there is no fuel <coughs> to create fire or uh, emit smoke <coughs> we have used a single uh, distribution gate varistor which contrib uh, contributes to its reliability and long lifetime this again we are going to discuss in our further slides coaxial sim uh, symmetry for uniform uh, uniform surge distribution which is again very obvious <coughs> see now there is a graph uh, which where we have compared two types of spd drindle mounted spds and a bus bar mounted spds now this, in india generally what we are using as of now is a drindle mounted spd you can see <coughs> with increase in surge current the upf is increasing in a uh, drindle mounted spd for example with 1 ampere surge current upf is around 16 kV whereas in case of uh, bus bar mounted spds there is very 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 slight increase in upf even for this 40 uh, <coughs> kilograms of surge current upf is less than 2 kV only so uh, in terms of reliability voltage production level uh, this bus bar mounted spds provide a very good performance so these are the various models available uh, for the bus bar mounted spds strikes of 30 40 and 80 it comes in various uh, nominal voltages 60 volt 120 volt 240 volt 271 volt 400 volt 480 volt 600 volt and 1000 volt based on the voltage we have certain models like strikes of 30 a b c and d strikes of 40 a b c d e f and g strikes of 80 a b c d e and f so these are the various models available uh, <coughs> with strikes of series spds now this is one of the major important advantages what bus bar is, uh, bus bar mounted spds have over other spds again uh, these are test all these spds are tested with vde as well as ul1449 fourth edition now if you see uh, in class 1 spd strikes of 30 even the least uh, rated spd is tested with 2000 uh, surges of 10 kilo amps each now normally a normal dindel spd is tested with maybe 10 15 20 surges now their testing method is once and surge is given to a dindel spd it is allowed to cool down before giving the second surge but practically lightning is not going to wait uh, for equipment or spd to cool down in real uh, life lightning can be multiple and it can be back to back let's say there can be back to back 10 lightning strikes or 10 subsequent impulses for that we have tested our bus bar mounted spds with 2000 uh, back to back strikes of 10 kilo amps and strikes of sp at is specially tested with 100 back to back strikes of 65 kilo amps each <clears throat> also we have tested our spds with uh, long duration impulses also like 250 numbers of 250 amps 2 millisecond uh, impulses all three spds have been tested with these impulses uh these are the various uh, connection examples of uh, bus bar mounted spds how a bus bar mounted spds are connected normally you can uh, make a separate as bar earth bus bar for connection of this spds and also you can connect it on the face bus bar also only while, now with this type of connection we are ensuring that since it is connected on the bus bar wire length is zero wire length is very very short in zero only small uh, wire length of let's say 10 mm or something is required just to connect spd uh, with the body of the panel which is again connected to earth so with the use of this kind of spds we can make wire length very minimal almost like zero <clears throat> now what are the other advantages of uh, uh, this bus bar mounted spds they are completely maintenance free now see uh, imagine we have installed an spd in let's say a 3200 amps panel a drindle mounted spd we have installed in parallel connection with some uh, let's say uh, some flag indication now it's a parallel device we don't know when it is going to fail let's say an spd has failed after 2 years but it's a parallel device it, it failed in open circuit mode it disconnected itself how how we are going to know unless and until we go and physically check the panel we we won't know whether spd is working or not working and practically in india it is very rare maybe once in 6 months only uh, we are going to check the panel so in that case 
our system is uh, left unprotected so once we use this uh, bus bar mounted spds they are warranted for 10 years anyhow 10 years they are warranted and they have a lifetime of 20 plus years this again i am going to explain in uh, further slides also so we are not we should not be worried about the maintenance going to regularly have a periodic check uh, check up of an spd whether it's working or not working uh, safe behavior under lightning condition uh, SPD can withstand multiple higher energy surges without sacrificing itself. This we are going to discuss in uh, further slide also. Where there is a test uh, details of, in the next slide. Better overall, uh, overall protection. Uh, fuseless design allows optimum protection level. Uh, up to certain ampere rating, these SPDs don't need a backup protection. So that will allow uh, a very less voltage protection level. <coughs> suitable for direct installation with high uh, surge current for the places where these surges are very common and very frequent we can use these spds uh, these spds are uh, again uh, tov tested spds tov is one of the most important parameter in an spd temporary over voltage uh, it is like uh, normally as we told that spd is going to operate when there is a voltage uh, more than voltage protection level but sometimes there can be a small voltage across, across an spd of 440 volt or maybe uh, more then that can create a failure in SPD. So these SPDs have immunity against TOV voltages. Okay. <clears throat> so again, these SPDs are tested as, uh, as per IEC as well as UL. As you know, UL is one of the most uh, uh, safest standard in the world under Writers Laboratory. So we have tested with UL 1449 4th edition as well as IEC 61643 part 11 2011. So we have installed almost 20 million units. Uh, now it has become almost 25 million units uh, with practically zero failure rate. We have not received a, a single complaint for this 20 uh, million units installed <coughs> across worldwide. That is not only in India, it is worldwide. So these are the uh, some important uh, parameters of the uh, bus bar mounted SPDs. Nominal voltage, uh, I have taken a certain series of voltage which is normally used in India. Uh, 277 volt which has an mcov of 350 volt uh, for all these three uh, models strikes like, so of 30 40 and 80c now uh, nominal discharge current is same for all three models again it is a test method they test it with 20 kilo amperes only maximum discharge current for strikes of 30 is 50 kilo ampere strikes of 40 is 140 kilo ampere strikes of 80 is 200 kilo amperes now when i am telling you this uh, 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 values 50 140 and 200 kilo, uh, kilo amperes this is per pole rating. This is not the total rating of four poles. This is per pole rating. Impulse current rating is 7.5 kilo ampere uh, for strikes of 30, 12.5 kilo ampere for strikes of 40, and 25 kilo amperes for strikes of 80. Now again, we have tested strikes of 80 with higher rating also. That again is going to come in the future uh, for the slides. Uh, short circuit rating is 50 kilo ampere for strikes of 30, 85 kilo ampere for strikes of 40 and 65 kilo amperes for strikes of 80 and again which is further tested with more rating also uh, tov voltage strikes of 30 40 and 80 again are tested for 528 volt standard has recommended spds to be tested with 442 volts for strikes of series spds are tested with 528 volt which is uh, much much better response time one of the most important parameter uh, with respect to an spd all the bus bar mounted spds have a response time of 1 nanoseconds and there is no uh, no uh, chance of follow current in a uh, strikes of series SPD, a bus bar mounted SPD because it's a MOV based SPD. So <clears throat> the endurance uh, testing of an SPD, the endurance and lifetime testing of an SPD. Normally, uh, we have taken an example of strikes of 40 and it was tested with uh, 10 lifetime cycles. What is a lifetime cycle? One lifetime cycle uh, is equivalent to 20 years of operation in the field. So how we test a one lifetime cycle? An SPD is given with uh, six numbers of 5 kilo ampere 10 by 3 impulse, nine numbers of 3.75 kilo ampere 10 by 3 impulse, 24 numbers of 2.5 ka 10 by 3 impulse, and 21 numbers of 1.25 ka 10 by 3 impulse. This constitutes one lifetime cycle. Each strikes of 40 is tested with total of 10 lifetime cycle. That means a normal strikes of uh, 40 under a normal condition is going to work for 200 years. But anyways, we don't know uh, how things will be in 200 years. So we, we generally uh, 
ensure 20 year 20 plus years of <coughs> life cycle for an spd so you see on the right side you can see a table uh, what was the outcome of the result when we uh, done this testing on strikes of 40 the residual voltage that means the voltage protection level almost uh, like a voltage protection level on spd you can see the change in percentage after first life cycle test it was 2.8% second 3.2% and in the 10th uh, test change was only 4.29% uh, in terms of leakage current after uh, first life uh, lifetime test cycle uh, the leakage current was 0. 0.234 uh, milliamperes and after 10th uh, life cycle test the leakage current was only 0. 0.44 uh, 0. 0.444 milliamperes so this is very 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 good uh, test result in terms of operations and reliability so <clears throat> strike soap series spds are uh, again uh, certified by ul for unlimited short circuit test for three cycles <clears throat> that means each spd has been given a short circuit current for 50 milliseconds uh, at 60 hertz frequency so below are the rating uh, that uh, power system available short circuit current uh, test currents for the uh, different models strikes of uh, 30 were tested with 42 kilampere uh, uh, short circuit current strikes of 40 were tested with 85 kilampere short circuit current and strikes of 80 was tested with 65 kilampere short circuit current uh, <clears throat> apart from that we have tested strikes of 80 model uh, strikes of 40 model with a single impulse of 200 kiloamperes 10 by 350 which is the highest possible uh, positive impulse current 200 kiloamperes in level 1 uh, we have seen in lpl1 the maximum expected uh, 10 by 50 current was 200k so we have tested strikes of 40 even though in the uh, earlier in the parameters we have shown 12.5k uh, only but still additionally we have tested uh, strikes of 40 with 200k uh, 10 by 350 impulse current and the result was strikes of didn't explode, didn't catch fire, and didn't uh, emit any uh, emit any smoke. This is the chart of the testing. So this is how a normal <coughs> strike soap can be connected. There are various uh, lugs can be used. It can be mounted on a plate and then connected with a nut. It can be mounted on a bus bar. It can be used through a uh, crimp terminal. A bus bar can be connected uh, on the screw. These are the various connection for strike soap. So uh, this was the general uh, technical uh, description about the SPDs. Uh, now we are going to take a Q and A question and answers. Yes, Vijay, we have a lot of questions. Some of the questions are already answered. Yeah. So there is a question from uh, Mr. Bhushan. No SPD is reusable. I don't know what exactly the question is. Uh, actually, I understood the no. question, sir. Generally, uh, SPDs are use, uh, reusable. They are not like fuse that after each search, they, we have to replace the SPD. Uh, once the SPD fails, you will get the indication through flag or anything. And then only you have to change the SPD. So it is not going to be replaced after each search. So the I question is SPD is not reusable. Yes, of course. After failure, it's not usable. You have to replace. <clears throat> the next question is. Uh, L2 length of the wire is up to earth soil. I think in the presentation you have shown the uh, length of the wire L1, L2. The question is whether this L2 is up to earth soil. So I would like to little bit explain about uh, this question. In a lot of places, due to unawareness, the earth terminal of SPDs are connected to a separate earth pit. This is absolutely wrong. The earth terminal of the SPD must be connected to the common earth bus bar of the panel. And that wire length has to be as short as possible. Probably less than, uh, let's say, uh, 500 or 250 millimeters. So L2 length of the wire to the answer to your question, L2 length of the wire is up to from the SPD's earth terminal to the earth bus bar of that particular panel or the location. So there is the next question. Please share the difference between uh, positive, negative and subsequent impulse. 
मिस्टर बैनर्जी द पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव एंड सब्सिक्वेंट इम्पल्स Uh, it all depends uh, on the charge of the cloud charge and size of the cloud finally what is uh, uh, you know sometime lightning can be of negative more than 95 percentage of the lightning strikes are of negative polarity that means the cloud is negative ground is positive approximately less than 5 percentage of the lightnings are of uh, positive polarity less than 5 percentage of positive polarity that means the cloud is positive and the ground is negative so there is a process uh, of uh, explanation of this particular thing how it is becoming positive how it is becoming negative and all this uh, will be too complicated to explain so uh, in case of uh, a positive lightning impulse uh, the waveform called as 10 by 350 is applicable whereas in case of negative impulse 10 by 350 the the current the equivalent energy in the form of a current wave shape is 1 bar 200 that means a negative lightning strike from it goes from zero to peak in 1 microsecond and comes to half value in uh, 200 microsecond whereas a positive lightning strike goes from zero to peak in 10 microseconds and come to half value in uh, 200 350 microsecond subsequent impulses are the impulse which is or the discharges which is happening immediately after the main discharge so there is lightning consists of a main discharge and there can be several subsequent discharges so what we are talking is positive negative and subsequent impulse so there are several combinations of these you can refer the standard for more details so there is a question from mr bhushan after spd indicator goes red we have to replace the particular spd in the spd holder of course you have to replace it so i don't know mr bhushan is trying to answer something it is not a question sorry so let us go to the next question there are some questions asked by anonymous uh, anonymous uh, members so generally we don't answer to the these questions uh somebody is asking mr uh, murli manohar are you referring to the wire length from the uh, spd to the load yes of course the wire length the one which mr vijay explained is the wire length between the face bar or the the line care, current carrying conductors to the spd and from the spd to the earth or neutral so the parallel wire length was the main discussion but the wire length from the spd to the equipment is equally important uh, so there can be problems of uh, reflections during the surge current or during the operation of the spd and if the wire length between the spd and the equipment is too long probably in some cases your equipment may not get uh, safety so uh, you have to this has to be analyzed by an expert who knows uh, about the spd and its operation and then only you should select uh, an appropriate model and install it's not like uh, uh, you have a, a panel board just buy something from the market and install it most often it won't work so not only the wire length between the spd to the load is also important then there is uh, the question how does spd differ from surge arrester functionally uh there is no functional difference both are uh, spd is a name these are only nomenclature surge arrester is a name spd is a name tvss is a name earlier somebody asked what is tvss transient voltage surge suppressor all these are names so due to practice uh, some uh, people call as surge arrester somebody call as spd somebody call as tvss and so on but nowadays uh, with respect to the standards it's all spd surge protective device so functionally surge arrester and spd is are the same uh somebody mr tiwari how much technician bend the wire during installation of spd oh this is a big big problem 
it's very easy to write in a standard and in a technical book uh, to make it you make a straight connection but practically and making a straight connection is most often 99 percentage cases very difficult as a result what happens is in the distribution board uh, we put the spd in one location and take the wire and connect it to the bus bar in most cases this wire length uh, or let's say more than 50 percentage cases the wire length is more than uh, 500 mm as recommended probably not 50 percent maybe even 90 percentage cases the wire length is more than 500 mm because practically there is a difficulty in installing the spd the second subject is spds often require a backup protection a hrc fuse sometimes mcbs are also used but the correct one is the hrc fuse so a wire from the earth from the face bus bar to the hrc fuse from the hrc fuse to the spd sometimes the wire length is too long this is the reason the bus bar mounted spds are becoming more important now because it does its function if you use a normal din rail mounted spd and connect it with a long wire probably the SPD is uh, uh, SPD will exist there, but it won't do its intended purpose. So, to the question, how much technician bend the wire? Okay, it depends on the uh, the technician who is doing it. Uh, uh, we have to train the technician in such a way that they are not uh, making any bend in these connecting wires. It should be as straight as possible. Mr. Suhas Shah, how can we connect? Uh, 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 bus bar type SPD for DC application. Yes, uh, Mr. Suhas, uh, uh, for large solar PV inverters on the DC side, uh, these bus bar mounted SPDs are used. The method of connection is same between the bus bars. Uh, the, uh, the, the panel board designer should uh, design this particular thing in, in such a way that uh, uh, these SPDs, there is space available to mount these SPDs. Uh, someone is asking image of bus bar mounted SPD connection. Probably Vijay, you can share the screen and you can show how the bus bar mounted SPDs are connected. Uh, Vijay, uh, I will continue reading the answer. Probably you share the screen and you uh, show how the bus bar mounted SPDs are connected so that it is easy. Yeah, you can make it uh, full screen. Uh, yeah. So in this particular case, uh, the picture which is on the on the left side top, uh, left side top, you can see the length of the wire. There is a wire used, but the length of the wire is too short, maybe about 200 millimeters. From the bus bar, it is directly connected to the terminal and the earth terminal is directly on the bus bar. The figure number two, left side bottom here the bus bar you can very well see the spd is connected in between the bus bars so in the case number three which is the sender picture of course a wire length is used of course a wire uh, length is used but uh, you know the we have to ensure that this wire is very short so these are some of the typical ways of installing uh someone asked the vijay you can show the screen 2000 number of strikes someone is asking what is the time gap between 2000 uh, surge shots not this one the, uh, this is yes, the previous. yeah this one please note that uh, these uh, the on the table classification class 1 10 by 350 class 2 8 by 20 multiple current impulse 8 by 20 so your question is about this multiple current impulse strikes or 30 this model 2000 into 10 kilo ampere so 10 kilo ampere strike 2000 numbers probably this 2000 numbers uh, you know once when there is a discharge the capacitor has to be charged again to make the next stroke so after each discharge uh, it needs some time probably if someone is working for eight hours shift 
per day he may be able to make uh, maybe 50 uh, strikes so into number of days you can calculate these uh, uh, are made in this fashion now another subject which is of important is uh, normally an spd a dendrile mounted spd is tested with uh, a surge current then immediately uh, the spd becomes hot the next surge has to be or the next test has to be carried out after cooling down the uh, surge arrestor to its normal temperature in practice lightning will not wait until the surge arrestor is cooled down lightning probably sometime it's a continuous process it may strike within few seconds uh, several shots may happen within few uh, uh, within a short time now these spd strikes of 30 40 80 the number of strikes which it is made 2000 into 10 kilo ampere this is over a period of time but uh, multiple strikes one after the other each of these spds are also tested for 7 to 8 times continuous that means immediately after one after the other so this is actually a very big advantage of these spds uh, you must have seen on the picture earlier picture the it is made with an aluminum housing so aluminum act like a heat sink for the for the mov so as soon as the mov is hot uh, the heat is it is cooled down quite faster uh, in comparison to a dendrile spd and that is the reason these spds are able to withstand the multiple strikes you can see the last one strikes of 80 100 times 65 k 2000 times 10 k and after that multiple high energy handling see uh, the lightning also consists of uh, the a long duration stroke so there are positive strike negative strike subsequent strike and a long duration stroke long duration stroke is a small current but flowing for a longer duration these spds are also tested for that particular purpose you can see on the strikes are 30 250 shots 250 amps 2 millisecond 250 times these spds are tested each of the current flow is uh, 250 amps and uh, that means the surge current is 250 amps and uh, the current flow the time or the duration of the current flow is 2 millisecond so in comparison to a microsecond phenomena the long duration stroke is for few milliseconds so the last test multiple energy handling this is for a long duration long duration in the sense uh, in comparison to an 8 by 20 uh, microsecond stroke 2 millisecond is uh, you see almost uh, 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 100 times or more uh, uh, duration so uh, to the answer to your question uh, time gap between 2000 numbers uh, short if you look at uh, between each and every shot uh, probably 2 3 minutes at least or even more but continuously it is also tested for 5 to 7 strokes without a failure the spd didn't fail next question where to put spd in any hospital at the main panel or uh, uh, elsewhere uh, you see we cannot answer immediately in this case we have to find out we have to uh, you know find out how the whole electrical installation is designed Uh, and then what kind of protective measures you already have and what kind of protection is required for your equipment so the correct answer to your question is where to put spd in any hospital spd is a critical component as far as the spd manufacturer is concerned or as far as the electronics engineer is concerned because he has to protect some electronic equipment but once when it comes to the electrical installation the whole electrical installation starting from the transformer up to you know the wires which gives several type of protective uh, uh, devices uh, meters automation uh, and so on so if you compare the importance of spd in the whole electrical installation it is one among probably thousands of device which is used so it is not like you buy some spd and connect it in your network most often it is dangerous so you have to analyze your electrical installation you have to find out how what kind of electrical installation is there for example what kind of system everything you are doing is it a tns system tt system 
where which location you are trying to make whether it is at the mains incoming panel or inside your uh, panel then you are uh, uh, your protection you are achieving uh, common mode or uh, differential mode you know there are so many questions so based on that only we can select it is not like uh, one model of spd you can use everywhere it won't work if you need a proper search protection uh then uh, Mr. Bernard Lawrence, uh, for a 4000 ampere bus bar, SPDs are available. Of course, for 4000 amps uh, bus bar, bus bar, SPDs are available. But uh, uh, these SPDs, which is shown, these are only tested for up to 1600 amps circuit breaker uh, or up to 80 kilo ampere fault current. So the question is 4000 amps bus bar SPDs. Uh, uh, this is actually, we have to, we, this is a, a different kind of uh, discussion because normally at the mains incoming, a 10 by 350 microseconds SPD is recommended and we always put a very big uh, uh, surge arrestor or a surge arrestor with a very high discharge current or impulse current capability in the mains incoming panel such as a 4000 amps panel board. But in practical, 4000 amps panel board, this 4000 is connected to the terminal of a transformer which is either inside the building or very, very close to the building, maybe 10 meters, 20 meters away from the building. 10 by 350 microseconds SPD is selected based on a principle 50 percentage or based on the assumption 50 percentage lightning current goes to earth and 50 percentage lightning current is diverted to the mains incoming but the point is this 50 percentage current lightning current diversion to the mains incoming is possible only if you have a long connecting wire low voltage electricity connected to a consumer premise from a transformer let's say one kilometer away in that case large current will flow whereas if your transformer is very close to your uh, uh, electrical main switchboard or if it is uh, within the building 10 by 350 current you cannot expect or you don't need such a large uh, nspd with a large current flow but for a 4000 amps uh, application you have to be very careful in selecting the spd because uh, it's very critical. We have another model of SPD. Probably in the next uh, presentation, we will show that an SPD with uh, inbuilt uh, backup backup fuse. So those SPDs are required for that application. Uh, I'm sorry that so many anonymous questions are there. Anonymous attendee, we won't be able to answer those uh, questions. Uh, what is the purpose of having a breaker before SPD? What if we don't have it? Also, how to select the rating of the breaker? Uh, this question is by Mr. Arun. Mr. Arun, these uh, will be addressed in the next program. We are having the part two of this webinar. So there we will uh, explain about the selection and the erection of backup protection whether it is a circuit breaker or whether it is a HRC fuse and the basis of those selections. So, Mr. Subrata Sahu, when we install SPD in a transformer on HT panel or HT panel, the wire length from SPD to earth station or earth bus is generally more as per site condition. Has it effect on the performance of SPD? Is the equipment duly protected? Uh, whether it is, uh, the answer is whether it is LT or HT, irrespective of the operating voltage, if the connecting wire length, the technical word is lead length. If the lead length is higher, uh, the equipment is not protected. Higher voltage goes into your system. The performance of the SPD is reduced in this particular case. So, the next question. Is there a correlation between effectiveness of uh, the surge protection device and uh, degradation of earth impedance value of its P connection? Is there correlation between the effectiveness of the surge protection device and uh, 
degradation of the earthing impedance value of its PE connection. Uh, uh, Mr. Ilaling, uh, actually the, the question I am unable to understand. Uh, probably once when few of the questions are over, we can have a chat and explain this. Uh, if anybody wanted to discuss or if anyone wanted to have uh, uh, a question, you can raise your hand. So we will allow you to uh, get unmuted so that you can also talk. Uh, Mr. Bhushan, you are uh, uh, raising your hand. If you, you can talk if you wanted to uh, talk. Mr. Bhushan, you have to introduce yourself and then please speak. Yeah. Uh, good morning, all. This is uh, Bhushan Mankame, electrical engineer from Electrical Inspector Office, Mumbai. And uh, I'm based in Mumbai. We are working for the state government department. Sir, uh, one question I had is uh, in the LT network of licensees, there are a lot of switching surges. And these switching surges cause problem in the electronic circuitry, the PCBs and burning of cards. This is a common phenomena in uh, printing industry and even in hospitals where uh, critical uh, biomedical equipments are present. So my question is, which type of SPD is suitable for protection from switching surges in the LT network. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bhushan. The answer is it's a type 2 SPD. So the SPDs are classified into type 1, which is uh, type 1 is for, uh, uh, it's a bigger SPD which can handle a lightning impulse current. The second one is a type 2 SPD, which is a smaller SPD uh, which can handle uh, switching surges. So it's a type 2 SPD uh, you are supposed to use for this particular purpose. But please note that SPDs are only for the transient phenomena, means for a, the, the phenomena is for a short time. Most of the time, if we discuss about the public distribution, more than transient phenomena, there is a temporary over voltage. Temporary over voltage is for a longer duration. It can be up to five seconds, not like a few microseconds. It can be up to five seconds. These temporary over voltages are due to fault on the HT system. Extra high voltage, the, the HT system. Let's say, for example, on the 11 kV system, there is a fault. And during that time, LT supply or the, the same this LT supply from the transformer can experience uh, uh, a temporary over voltage which will exist for a longer duration and lot of cases devices are failing due to this temporary over voltage so here uh, even if you put an spd uh, it won't uh, provide the necessary protection the energy supplier shall take care of it and uh, they have to make necessary arrangement to limit the uh, transient or limit this temporary over voltage so this is a, a sometime we have to be a little bit careful. Thank you for the question. We have uh, sir, uh, the sir, can I can I add the subsequent question if with your kind permission? Yes, please. Yeah. So uh, the point that you said is we have to use type one and type two SPD for the protection of these electronic circuitry. So now this uh, next question comes in my mind is, what is the range of protection in type 2 SPD one should select? Yeah. Uh, if you can go to the, the range in the sense you are talking about the current range because the devices have parameters related to current, impulse current or discharge current and voltage. If the question is with respect to current, you can go to the National uh, uh, Building Code, uh, Part 1, section. sorry, not National Building Code, National Electrical Code, which was published uh, two months back, Part 1, Section 13. So there the different conditions and different uh, ratings are also written. NEC, 
part one, section 13. Please refer there. Thank you. Uh, because, you know, depending upon the thank condition, you, uh, they are writing. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bhushan. Uh, then, uh, Mr. Murali Krishna, how safe, uh, how is safety so auditor we... have to evaluate SPD online? Yes, Shonali? So, so we have Mr. J, who is uh, waiting to ask uh, a question. Yes, Mr. Jai. Sir, good afternoon, Jai here from Medicare Industries. Am I audible? Please go ahead. Am I audible, sir? Yes. Achha, uh, regarding one uh, uh, question which has been asked by the person uh, from the Inspectorate Mumbai office, Mr. Man Kame, regarding if there is any device uh, which can be used in hospital uh, due to uh, the transient effect of switching. Actually, I have come across one uh, stabilizer kind of thing. What they call is that static voltage stabilizer. Okay. So if uh, this is being used, uh, it can help in hospital to overcome uh, 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 over voltage, which is uh, lasting for more than five seconds or uh, five seconds, what we are discussing. Mm. It is also not 100% is true. It depends uh, on the amount of the voltage which is going to come and its duration. Correct. This temporary over voltage, actually the consumer have little uh, control over it. It has to be limited by the energy supplier. If the transformer belongs to the consumer, of course, yes. For larger hospitals where you have your own transformer, of course, you can control it. Whereas if it's a public distribution, it's uh, very difficult uh, to do that. There are several solutions available, but uh, uh, you know none of these solutions are uh, effective. The best way is the energy supplier or the transformer owner should ensure that such voltages are limited to less than certain level. Thank you. I hope uh, uh, my yes, answer sir. is clear, Mr. J. Yes, yes. But uh, to add to this uh, one supplementary question, I have posted in uh, Q&A also. Like I belong to basically electronics background. So uh, in general, for such uh, incidents where over voltage is there for more than five seconds or five seconds, the term VDR, that is voltage dependent resistance, is connected between phase and neutral for a single phase device. And at times I have seen in some three phase inverters also that they are connecting these uh, VDRs, uh, voltage depending resistance, or what you rightly said that TVS, transient voltage suppressor uh, devices. These are connected directly between phase and neutral rather than uh, what we are discussing today, SPDs which are connected between phase and earth, uh, neutral and earth. So like point what I'm trying to say that for if you want protection for longer period uh, for a particular device which is operating on a single phase, uh, we can use a VDR, uh, which is nothing but a SPD only, but it should be connected between phase and neutral. And it should be after the MCCB. So if, you, if the... No, see, you see... You see, there are there are several practices in the industry. Okay. Now, the device which is the heart of the device inside an SPD and the device which you are talking, it's all maybe MOV or MOV, metal oxide varistor, which is nothing but voltage dependent resistor. Okay. Once when the voltage voltage goes beyond a certain level, the impedance in between the terminals goes uh, to a very low level. So. It's all voltage dependent resistors only. But the problem is the significance of SPD is, or the problem of this voltage dependent resistor is, it always fails in short circuit mode. So you, inside your, uh, let's say, a drive or something like that, immediately after the uh, circuit breaker, between the terminals, if you are using an MOV, Generally, what happens is after some time, this MOV is a source of fire. 
because the MOV fails, it creates short circuit and it catch fire. SPD is also the heart of SPD is also type 2 SPD most of the time is also an MOV. But once when it is made as an SPD, necessary safety measures are included in the SPD, such as once when the temperature is goes the temperature is beyond 80 degrees centigrade, then the MOV is disconnected from the line. Number two, once when the uh, short circuit current is more than certain level, the MOV is disconnected from the circuit. So SPD is a device which is an which is a safe device in comparison to a device uh, uh, you know directly connected between the line and the neutral. So basically, the heart of both the devices are same. I hope it's clear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. So, so with the time constraint, we have uh, almost a lot of questions still pending. Yes, I can see almost now further we have about 43 questions, 43 questions uh, to yes. be answered. Uh, probably we can answer five more questions out of this and then uh, close. Sir. So, Mr. Murli Dara has asked one question. How is safety auditor uh, has to evaluate SPD online? Will there be any calibration sticker or any light indication uh, that SPD works? Yes, of course, there is a light, a green and a, a red light indication or not exactly a light, but an, a flap indication is available in some of the SPDs. And these directly bus bar mounted SPDs, there are some additional indicative devices uh, possible. So there are NONC contacts also available. You can connect these to the uh, BMS system as well. But uh, more than that, uh, the life of the SPD can also be tested with a uh, universal SPD tester. It's a handheld device. The Preferably the safety auditor should have this kind of a device and he has to test the SPD and find out uh, its healthiness in the sense if the SPD is already degraded, but not 100% failed, probably you can uh, replace the SPD. Uh, so there is a question on what basis surges are generated in a hospital load, especially in CT, MRI scan machine connected panels. Uh, of course. This is uh, on, uh, the, uh, you know, there are several conditions with which surges can be generated. For example, once when any inductive load is put on, for example, the uh, an air conditioner is on. At that time, the, the switching on operation or switching off operation creates a surge. Number two, during this surge current flow through the wires, the nearby electronic equipment will have an induced effect. So smaller devices such as BMS equipment or whatever, if these two wires are running very close, also will have an induced effect. So in practice, a switching operation of an air conditioner can create failure in your electronics and it can also create failure in an extra low voltage system or a BMS system if the wiring rules are not taken care properly. That is the reason in these standards, we recommend certain distances or certain techniques to be adopted between different circuits so that such interferences are reduced. Now, with respect to the CT and MRI scan machine, in a hospital, it's a much bigger subject with respect to EMI, EMC. Not only surges, you are supposed to take care of several other parameters such as EMI, EMC. One moment, please. So, sorry for that. So in hospital, of course, EMI, EMC is a much bigger su subject. You have to take care of not only from surges, the, the entire electronic and electrical appliance shall be protected against uh, uh, EMI, EMC. Otherwise, example, there is an air conditioner 
operation switching on during this time a biomedical equipment screen may have a different reading let's say something is shown on the screen say for example pulse 72 but during this time probably the 72 may go to 90 and then come back so the readings of these biomedical equipments gets affected due to the emi which is a much bigger problem rather than failure so the next question Uh, how to check uh, or confirm the installed SPD is working or not? Uh, how to calculate the SPD for lighting load? Uh, actually, Mr. Patel, uh, Patil, uh, we cannot calculate the SPD for lighting load. We have to, the SPDs are selected based on its location and uh, the amount of expected surge. So we have certain calculation. Probably if you can send a mail to us, we will explain this in detail. Someone asked what is the difference between TVSS and SPD. It is already answered. Probably you can look at the uh, question answer answer session. You will be able to see that. Uh, gentlemen, we have uh, another uh, 40 more questions. We will try to reply these questions uh, once when uh, uh, we get the uh, information. Uh, the best way is we will post our uh, email address. The email address of Mr. Vijay will be posted there. I request you to send uh, emails to Mr. Vijay. These questions can be posted to Mr. Vijay. He can answer uh, uh, quite easily because, as I said, we have uh, more than 40. Now, again, the count is going up. Uh, over to you, Shonali. We can probably end up uh, the program. So, as I can see, there were still a lot of uh, questions which were with, because of the time constant we couldn't answer. And uh, as per the request uh, by Gopakumar sir, you all can uh, connect with Mr. Vijay. In the chat box, the mail IDs are already given. And uh, for to connect with Mr. Gopakumar, you can also connect with him in the mail ID. That is also mentioned in the chat box. And uh, this uh, webinar was very informative, uh, Gopal sir and uh, Vijay Singh sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, all of this. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the participants. Thank you.